and it ended up being a wonderful part of my high school experience. I'm so glad I did it. And from it, I learned, hey guys, I'm Sarah, I'm Caitlin, and we are your best friends. That was the horrible click you didn't hear the noise. <coughs> we are going to be talking about how to make friends in high school. Wow, I wish that I had this video when I was in high school. Yeah, because you were a loser. No. <laughs> loser. Loser. Um, I don't know. It's true. I struggled to make friends. You were not a loser. loser. I was a loser. <laughs> I did not know how to make friends, so relatable. This, all these tips could apply really well if you're transferring high school. Some people do that. Yeah, first year at a high school. For freshman year. If it's your junior year and you still haven't made that many friends yet and you get nervous when uh -huh. the first day comes around, this is for you. Yeah, or you just need advice for friendships, making them, and mm -hmm. you're in high school. And I like the vibe that we're going to take this in because we're going to have tips. We're going to put some tips in there. Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about, you know, it in a deeper, more cool way so that it has lasting impact rather than yeah, we just want you to have all the friends in the world mm -hmm. and just be happy and social. Because you were not created to fit a perfect box. You're created to be you. So it's like, let us give you the tips that give you the tools that you need. And then you implement them. But also, we're not trying to make you cookie cutter outgoing. Cookie cutter, uh, what's the opposite of outgoing? Quiet. Quieter. Before we get into this video, subscribe to our channel. We are your best friends. And when you subscribe, you join our friend group. Check out our website, yourbestfriends.org. Yeah. You can see what we're all about. And then you can also head to our blog on there and get some reading in. And heck, if you're at a high school and you guys ever have something where you need to invite speakers and stuff, email us. You could always fill out the contact form. We have been invited to speak at one high school so far. We're totally mm -hmm. considering speaking for something. Or maybe a club needs there to be like a hype reason for kids to show up or whatever. We're in Florida, you let us know. That's just something we'll throw out there as well. Our first two tips actually contradict each other, but not really, but in a funny way. When me and Sarah were coming up with them, I said a tip and she's like, that's funny. I was gonna say the opposite. And the reason for that is because Sarah and I have different personalities, different strengths and different weaknesses when it comes to being social. So I'm gonna give mine first. And this is for people like me. And then you're gonna hear People like Sarah and you can take pieces of advice from either of them. Yeah. So it's really cool. When it comes to making friends in high school, for your first few days of school, if you're like me and you're somebody that tends to shut down and be quiet, is more shy or really just doesn't know how to get themselves out there and make friends and will end up being the quiet one in the class, my tip for you is to just take advantage of the first few days of school and talk to people in your classes and ask them questions. Lots of people that you don't know. I just know that if I waited until three months into the school year to try to start making friends, it was harder for me because I was a little bit insecure that everyone had already made their friends, which also is not true. And that will be another tip yeah. that we'll talk about. But I just know for people who are more shy, it gave me a newfound confidence those first few days to know, hey, like everyone's in this together. Everybody's nervous. Not everyone is fully comfortable yet. So it's a good opportunity to f ask people questions. Even if you're shy, that's the best way to talk to people is just, hey, how's your first day going? What period do you have next? Things like that. So that's for people like me uh, for the first few days of school. And, and P, you could be insecure being quiet person. You can be insecure being outgoing person. So that's why in the beginning I said we don't want you to fit a cookie cutter look because that's just a look. We want to just make sure that you feel free as who you are, which is why I like that we have two different pieces of advice for advice for socializing the first few days. For me, I want to give you permission that you don't have to show face the first few days. You can actually just be chill and just kind of observe people in your different classes and observe the social settings. You do not have to be the most outgoing and talkative person right off the bat because if you're like me who is outgoing, I might become overwhelmed to think that like I have to just run with it but the reality is you have a whole year to meet people and for people with my personality, I remember making a mistake. It felt like a mistake. I became too um, social with this friend group and it turned out they were weirdos to me by the end of the second week. And I'm like, oh crap. 
So in the next few weeks of your high school experience, like things will start to fall into place and you will start to be who you are. Your personality will come out if you're like me. If you're like Caitlin, you might end up start believing the lie that like, okay, everybody's already doing their things. It's too late for me. Might as well own that I'm like quiet. Don't be hard on yourself. If you're normally known as outgoing, but right now you just want to be chill and quiet. Join clubs or sports, but here's the kicker because you've probably heard this if you've watched any advice on how to make friends. That sounds all fun and games, but what's happening because we're kids and nobody's pushing us and also we have too much phone time and socialization is getting harder. So we get really nervous to do things when it actually comes time to do them. Maybe you've always wanted to do a certain sport, but now the tryouts are coming up and you're so nervous that you're going to look dumb or that you're not going to make friends or you want to go to this club and you just are very nervous about making friends. You feel like you have a lot of worry and anxiety about it. Do not, do not, do not, do not let your nerves get in the way of you doing anything that you want to try. You should try every club and sport if you feel like you want to try it. Do not be comfortable with saying it's okay if I don't do that just because I'm nervous. Like that is how you meet people. Too many people want to be like it's okay just self-care, take care of yourself. You're nervous, that's all right. I'm actually telling you, push yourself. It's you not all right. Us. You gotta, it's not okay. We don't want to normalize being nervous and not going. Mm -hmm. You have to. Um, and I will tell you one way that it looks like is the night before or the, you know, you might hear at school these clubs and you might think, I want to do that. And it's going to be fun, fun, fun. I want to do that. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to do this. But then if you're new and you don't know anybody, notice you might have some things creep in like oh it's not that big of a deal like maybe i just shouldn't do it maybe i just shouldn't go you know the hours leading up you're extremely nervous you have butterflies you don't know anybody what's it gonna look like whatever your biggest nightmare fears you're so nervous your heart's pounding all day i don't know what it's gonna look like for you if that's happening to you do it you have to you because have to. you wanted to but now that the nerves are kicking in you're considering just not at least go to the tryout. It's one thing to decide you don't want to do it, but if you back out because of nerves, we don't want to be nerves, be, have nerves be the reason why we quit. We can decide we don't want to do something because we've seen, okay, I'm actually not as interested in this as I thought, but to give up because of nerves, it's increasingly getting more difficult at your ages in high school because like you just said, phones and stuff, and you know, you guys had to deal with COVID the last year and yeah. a half. I mean, your skills of socialization, a lot of kids nowadays, you guys just, it's very nerve wracking and we're not used to like not having phones and just looking around. So push yourselves. You got to do it. You will thank us afterwards. We're, we're trying to be those good parents who forced you to go to that party or something, that kid's birthday party you didn't feel like going, and then you never end up wanting to leave afterwards. Yep. I just want to pound that point in with a personal example because it's so true. There were so many things that I was nervous about because I was the type to get really nervous and never know anybody going into things. I never knew anyone when I would join new sports. I was always the girl, there's actually a lot more of us than you think, that didn't know anybody. So in high school, one wonderful example is I really wanted to do weightlifting because I'd never done it before and I wanted to get into working out and they had really cute weightlifting shirts. But <laughs> I did I did track for their cool like track suit. Let's just be honest for our motivations, okay? That's that was a big factor. I wanted to do it. I was so nervous and was overthinking leading up to it. I thought am I really going to do this? I don't know anybody. I knew the girls that did it and I wasn't friends with them. I'm like, I don't even know how to lift weights. By the way, if you're nervous that you're going to look dumb or that you don't know how, you're in high school. They're going to teach you a lot of stuff just by joining a sport. Okay, so heck, even in college, they treat you like a baby and they tell you everything. So yeah. you're covered, trust us. Literally, if you have zero idea how to do that, they're going to talk to you up. like that, yeah. They are not assuming that everybody knows what they're doing. They're assuming that most of them are babies. So I was so nervous that I was going to look dumb, and I almost did not do it. And if I and I ended up forcing myself to do it, and it was nothing like my fears. And it ended up being a wonderful part of my high school experience. I'm so glad I did it. And from it, I learned the foundations of working out that I use in my life today. It's very important. It, you will thank yourself five years from now, seriously. Yeah. If it is lunchtime, you don't know anybody to sit with, I'll make this one quick. You, you did a strategy for, at my school, it was just like fourth period came around and then it was time for lunch. And instead of like having 
anxious feelings up to lunch, I just bit the bullet. Is that the saying? Yeah. Bit the bullet. I went up to the coolest girls I thought. I said, can I eat lunch with you guys? I mean, think about it. If you were in those girls' shoes and a girl asked you if you could have lunch, it's like, why not say yes? So just make sure that you're covered for lunch and ask somebody and then you had your little strategy. Mine was just if you go to a big high school and there's different lunch periods in the morning, like before lunch, you can always just be having casual conversation with people and ask them what their lunch period is. And then if you guys have the same one, chances are they want somebody to sit with because nobody knows who has what schedule yet. Yeah. So just use that as a casual way to be like, oh, you have this lunch period too. Let's sit together. Yep. So easy. And this just has to do with insecurity. Don't assume that everybody already has their friends or and or that they don't want any more friends and that you're weird for talking to people or that these this group of two girls that you jump in on their conversation, they're super close and you're the weirdo for talking to them. All of those types of lies that will keep you from talking to people in your classes, from talking to people when you join a new club, that lie would keep me because I would always think like everyone's known each other for so long. And as the years have gone on and I've gotten older and smarter, I start to realize if you're in a group of like four girls, let's say, and they're all talking in class, chances are most of them don't actually know each other. They just started talking for fun. And to and, not look alone. And to not look alone. So you are actually helping them by talking to them. And even if they do know each other, if somebody doesn't want you to talk to them, they're extremely rude and that's a rare type of person. Most people want you to talk to them. And I just know if you have an insecurity, you feel like people don't want you talking to them. People want your presence in conversations. Don't assume that you're the weirdo that doesn't have any friends. People probably don't know each other more than you think. You're just making the assumption that everyone is better off than you. That's not true. And don't believe that lie. We got to recognize each one of us have different lies in our minds. Mm -hmm. So start to recognize what are your fallbacks? What are the lies that keep you from doing things? Yeah. Um, we have different personalities. We have different lives and experiences. People have told Caitlin different things and me different things. And that got us to believe certain lies. Mm -hmm. Like you're not wanted in this conversation. So in recognizing those things, it could help you do the opposite of what that lie is trying to tell you in order that you could become more free, even in high school. My go-to in high school with conversations is just ask questions to that person about their life. You definitely don't want to hop in a conversation and start, oh, well, you can do whatever you want. Just read the signs. Like if you start rambling, everyone's losing interest, catch the signs that you're rambling a lot. But the best go-to is care about people. So ask them where they came from. Ask them where they live. What do they do for fun? It sounds so old-fashioned and simple from somebody who is good at making friends, just like Caitlin is. Do the old-fashioned and simple. It's called being a good person. Because after all, just because we're nervous in high school doesn't mean that every kid still has to go home to where they live. And they could be well-known in their high school, but you don't know about their home life. Like, let's bring this to a grand depth picture like kids still have possibly imperfect lives to go home to so you caring about them as a human versus just like you know because you're alone might be very powerful they could need the conversation that you spark up with them maybe it's been a while since somebody actually asked them more than two questions you know that's just some more motivation um in socializing with people that's the things that i would always think about and that's what got me far was i just cared about people before the bell rings you could be sitting in your seat and it depends on your school but i think you're allowed to be on your phone before you know class officially starts don't be on your phone like everybody's gonna be on their phone their phones don't be on your phone just it's old-fashioned once again but old-fashioned works for good people sit and just look around, force yourself, don't go on your phone. And why is that, Keelan? Well, you want to look approachable and you want to be approachable if you want to make friends, even if you're shy. And they say that because shy people, a lot of times y'all are waiting on people to approach you. If somebody likes you, they would approach you, but it actually is yeah, just more, like much more than that. Everyone's human, everyone's shy, but the, that's besides the point. My point is, the reason why Sarah's saying don't look at the phone is because you want to look approachable. So even if your phone school doesn't allow phones, when it's the end of class and everybody's talking in the period and like the teacher's not teaching anymore, instead of 
being distracted and like let's say you're you feel uncomfortable so you start doodling in your notebook or you start pretending you're doing something no one's going to come up to you and talk to you i encourage you if you're in that situation where everyone's talking and everyone's in a conversation do the what feels uncomfortable sit up in your seat hold your head up put a little grin on your face like this it's so uncomfortable it's uncomfortable and i want you to just look around and hold it for 30 seconds nobody is looking at you thinking, why isn't that person talking to anybody? Why are they just sitting there? It actually looks much more normal than you think it does. Yeah. It just feels really uncomfortable for you. But I want you to sit there like that and either listen for a conversation that you can jump in on in a nice way, like don't interrupt anybody, but there's conversation probably that somebody can make eye contact with you. Or maybe you see somebody who's alone too and you can ask them a question you have to step out of your comfort zone, though, and do things that make you a little uncomfortable. And that's why these tips work only if you apply them. We're not giving you tips of how to make friends that are just fluffy tips that sound amazing but are never going to work. We're just giving you the basics Yeah. that will work if you apply them. But if you're just not going to do that and you're going to go on your phone before class, you're not going to be approachable and people aren't going to come up to you. So even if you don't have the phone, just don't distract yourself look like literally check yourself in your mind do I look like somebody that I would want to talk to right now because if you're like then don't feel insecure that no one's talking to you it's just they think you're busy and they're trying to respect you so. exactly tip number seven is just a quick one and it's about your character and also it's just smart be nice to everyone don't just be nice to the people that are popular and look cool if somebody comes up to you and they're a weirdo, treat them as if you would treat the most coolest popular person in school. It doesn't mean you have to be friends with everybody, but you never want to burn bridges. You never want to be rude to people. And the weird person that you didn't think you ended up being friends with, you could actually have a lot more in common with than you think. So do not judge based off of appearances and just be nice to everyone. Because if that was your son or daughter, would you want somebody to be rude to them? Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just judgment when you do that. And I have totally done this growing yeah, up. Yeah. I created social systems in my head and I would go up on the ladder. That's, I realized, so wrong because it's so not how God is to us. Man does base things off of the appearance, but God looks at the heart. And if you can become somebody who does your best to guard the way that you speak about people, even when it's just with your close friends, and you could guard the way that you think about them and you treat them how God would treat them, it will really change your life. Nervousness. You're going to be nervous in many situations. Being nervous is not a good reason to give up or to stop or anything. I still get nervous sometimes before going to little events. I still get nervous sometimes when I don't know the people there. Nervousness is so normal, but in the moment, like, it's one thing to hear it on a video. Nervousness is really normal. Don't be freaked out by it. But I know that in the moment, it's awful. Like, it's horrible. It's totally worth, like, turning around in. But I do just want to let you know, you have permission to do things extremely nervous, and you must. you got to do it. Odds are you don't have anxiety. Odds are you're just extremely nervous because you haven't been pushed to do things regardless of how you felt. So we want to tell you, push yourself and you're okay for being very nervous. Don't normalize being nervous and backing out. Normalize doing things nervous, doing things afraid. Normalize doing instead of backing out. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below what you are excited about with this new year of school and how you're going to be making friends because you are and also, don't forget to pray if you're nervous yes. or you need friends. God will put people in your life. Please subscribe to our channel, especially if you watched to this point. We love you guys so much. We're putting out new videos every week just for you to, to soak up. <laughs> soak up, baby. Love you guys so much, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.